work as a special purpose fund uh, within ANRF. Now, this special purpose fund will be the holding fund. It will hold uh, this uh, 1 lakh crore corpus. But uh, this fund will identify the second level fund managers. Mm. Uh, so second level fund managers uh, could be uh, the alternate investment funds uh, or development financial institutions or some focused research organizations uh, like Technology Development Board or BIRAC. Uh, and uh, the, uh, this uh, first level fund will channel the money through this second level fund manager. And the second level fund manager then will do the actual investments in the R&D projects of the private sectors. So this is how, you know, in this, uh, it will have a two-tiered uh, uh, structure and it will work in this two-tiered structured uh, mechanism. Right. Uh, who will be the target groups for receiving the funds? So the target groups uh, we are envisaging primarily the private sector uh, and in the private sectors it could be the corporates, uh, it could be the industry R&D labs or it could be the startups. Uh, now for corporates uh, and uh, uh, you know industries uh, the funding uh, assistance or the financial assistance uh, will be largely in the form of uh, concessional loans. Uh, for startups, uh, it could be both uh, loans uh, as well as uh, equity. Under this fund, uh, you know, no grant uh, will be given. No grant will be given to startups. It will be mostly, you know, concessional loans, uh, equity or a combination of that. Right. Uh, what is the kind of uh, technology or the sectors where you would like to focus uh, with this fund, sir? What, what would be the priority three to four sectors according to you? Yeah. So, um, uh, so I think I just wanted to uh, mention here that one of the major objectives of these research development and innovation fund to spur the research in private sectors in some sunrise sectors. Uh, now, uh, it was, uh, you know, it is a general uh, sort of uh, belief uh, that uh, uh, a cutting edge technology development in these sunrise sectors, uh, they have a long gestation periods, uh, you know, uh, and uh, the return on investments uh, on some of these cutting edge uh, research and development and technology development uh, may take a longer time. It is sometimes, you know, uh, uncertain also, so there is a lot of uncertainties involved. And uh, as a result, therefore, the private sector investments in uh, these sunrise sectors, and these sunrise sectors, they could be, you know, the energy transitions, or they could be the biotechnologies, or they could be deep tech, like quantum, or robotics, or space, or, you know, uh, defense sectors. So it could be, uh, you know, one of these uh, sunrise sectors. Uh, where, you know, cutting edge technology development requires a longer gestation period. So, uh, 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 and, and therefore our private sectors were actually hesitant to invest uh, in these sectors. This fund will actually mitigate the initial risks and will invest in the cutting edge technology development in sectors such as energy transitions, precision agriculture, digital economy, deep tech like quantum, uh, robotics, drone, space, uh, or, you know, uh, strategic security application technologies. So I think these are the sectors currently uh, we are uh, envisaging uh, where it is very important for our country to develop uh, strategic uh, autonomy uh, and uh, develop indigenous uh, technologies. Right. So this means, sir, the company, uh, the government will be open to picking up equity in uh, companies as well, as well as startups. Yes, yes, yes. I think uh, under these initiatives, uh, we will be uh, also, uh, you know, setting up deep tech uh, fund of funds, and uh, through that deep tech fund of funds. Uh, Equity in the deep tech startups uh, will also be uh, is is also is also envisaged. Yes, right. Uh, now, when you say uh, a deep tech fund of fund will be set up, what would be the quantum of uh, 
that fund within this larger bracket of 1 lakh crore. So, uh, you know, the 1 lakh crore is the total corpus uh, that, you know, Honorable Finance Minister had made an announcement uh, last year. Uh, in this year, you know, 20,000 crore allocation has been done. The remaining, uh, you know, fund will be allocated in subsequent uh, budgets, uh, you know, as we start uh, deploying. Now, the exact allocations of this, how much it will, will go to the deep tech startups, in which sectors uh, it will go, uh, how much it will be given to the private sectors, R&D projects or corporates. Uh, will these decisions, uh, you know, uh, are currently being worked out? And as I mentioned, uh, Anusandhan National Research Foundation, ANRF, uh, uh, it will be set up as a special purpose fund within ANRF. ANRF has an executive council uh, that will be providing the uh, overall uh, superintendent, uh, superintendents over uh, this fund. Uh, so all these, you know, decisions we will be taking up. Uh, in the coming months, uh, you know, identifying, you know, uh, uh, the scope and type of the projects uh, and also the quantum of uh, funding uh, that will go uh, into various sectors. Right. Now, when it comes to benchmarking or setting up a criteria for the companies, uh, which will be a deciding factor for the government, could you give us a sense if there is any thinking on the kind Think of companies or the benchmark that will be laid out for identifying them? No, actually, we are open to any private sector uh, company, whether it is corporates or industry or startups. But there are only two criteria. One is the technology development should be really cutting edge and deep tech. This fund will not be used to subsidize the routine R&D of the private sector. So that is actually uh, is very, very clear because our objective is really to de-risk uh, early investment where the private sector investment uh, is not uh, coming up. So we will not be using it to uh, subsidize the routine R&D. So that is one, one, one sort of uh, major. The other major is that we would also like the private sector, particularly the corporates, uh, to also bring in some investments uh, to the extent of uh, maybe the 50% cost uh, 50% uh, of the total cost uh, of the project so that, you know, uh, the corporates also have a skin in the game. Uh, so I think uh, these, uh, these will be the broader criteria. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, the detailed criteria, etc. are currently being worked out. And uh, I think uh, in the couple of months, uh, you know, from now, uh, we should be uh, able to, uh, you know, come fully roll out uh, this scheme. So you're saying, sir, the corporates as part of the scheme will be asked to pay 50% of the project cost at least? Yes, yes. I mean, we are... Exp so, uh, you know, uh, we were expecting that, you know, the corporates should also put in, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, amount uh, uh, so that, uh, you know, uh, uh, so that, you know, we see the uh, their uh, seriousness and their willingness uh, to take the risks along with the government, because the, obviously the government is taking uh, the risk uh, in the cutting edge technology development. So this is one of the vehicles to de-risk, uh, you know, their uh, full investment. Right. Uh, I would also ask you about uh, the possibility of acquiring technology from abroad when it comes to acquisition or buying of technologies and providing it to companies and startups in the country. Would you be open to doing that as well, sir? Yes, yes. I think, uh, as has been uh, uh, mentioned also, that this fund will also be used to uh, do the acquisition of technologies. Uh, uh, so suppose, uh, you know, some startup or some company uh, wants to acquire uh, a technology so that, you know, it gives us an advantage of not starting from zero, but starting from some base which they have acquired and then leapfrog it uh, to the next level. Yes, uh, that fund can be used uh, uh, by the companies for the acquisition of uh, those technologies as well. Uh, otherwise, you know, the basic objective is to do the R&D, do the commercializations, product development, etc. But uh, it doesn't have to start uh, from, uh, you know, zero. It could also start by acquiring some technology and then uh, building onto it. And we will be open uh, to supporting such measures. 
Okay. Uh, I would also like to ask you about uh, the rare earth magnet crisis in the country. Uh, do we have the technology right now for refining the rare earths and then making magnets in the country? Because this seems to be a major problem. Uh, would, would the government be open to acquiring technology from friendly allies? Yes, I think so. First of all, let me tell you that we do have the technology in some of our labs. Uh, and, uh, uh, and if some private cor sector corporates or, you know, some industry uh, wants to take it further and commercialize, uh, yes, uh, I think that is a uh, possibility. Uh, we can uh, look at uh, such project proposals. And uh, alternatively, as you mentioned, uh, since uh, acquisition of technologies, uh, uh, will also be supported uh, through these initiatives. Uh, we are open uh, to that. And it is not just the rare earth magnet, but even, you know, other sectors also. And uh, these sectors include uh, uh, whether, you know, uh, it is in the quantum or whether uh, it is in uh, robotics or whether it is in the space uh, or whether it is in the uh, defense sectors uh, and and uh, or whether it is in the biomanufacturing and biotechnologies. So in all sectors, uh, you know, uh, 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 this fund uh, will be open. I think there is only one uh, one uh, important criteria, and that criteria is that that this fund is really meant for supporting the uh, you know deep tech R and D, cutting edge R and D where earlier the investments, uh, you know, from the private sector uh, is low because private sectors are shying away uh, from investing uh, because of the long gestation period, because of, uh, you know, the risks, risks involved. And these sectors actually require patient capital, uh, as has been mentioned uh, several times. And this is, you know, uh, the government's bold initiative to provide that patient capital to the private sector. Okay, my, my final question to you, sir, would be, will this be a limited time frame fund subject to the availability of funds within the 1 lakh crore corpus? Or would this become like a sovereign wealth fund, a rolling fund that will always be there now to incentivize cutting edge R&D in the deep tech space? <clears throat> yes, I think uh, we hope uh, that this fund will be able to generate returns because once you invest uh, uh, in, let's say, startups, we take equity or once we give it to corporates, I, we hope uh, that uh, we will get these returns. We are, of course, expecting that we will get the 1 lakh crore return back, but even more than that. Uh, and then that can be rolled uh, into the future projects. Uh, as you know that uh, what is today sunrise sectors may change after five years. So that may also, you know, we can also make, uh, you know, uh, uh, those uh, changes uh, as well. And thirdly, then most importantly, this should be considered as an initial investment by the government. We are hoping that by giving that initial patient capital, in the coming years, private sector's money will flow in to actually, uh, you know, scale uh, these technology development to the next level. So we are hoping that when the government invests 1 lakh crore, maybe, you know, this will uh, uh, catalyze investment of 10 lakh crores, uh, maybe. All right. So that is an important point, sir, that uh, you're investing 1 lakh crore in R&D. You would expect the private sector possibly to uh, make more investments, perhaps even to the tune of 10 lakh crore rupees in R&D. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Karandikar, for joining us here on CNBC TV 18, giving us a very comprehensive view on how this policy is going to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. On that note, we take a short break. But on the other side, investment firm Recognize has announced successful close of its second digital services fund after securing over $1.7 billion in commitments. I caught up with the Recognize co-founder Francisco D'Souza on the firm's investment bets and growth plans. Going ahead, stay tuned.